I'm going to kick off with this one from the Adam. Um, Hello, DF crew, exclamation point. How can the new and rumored Xbox models make customers curious? Why should I switch to a PC-like model with AMD architecture when I can just use PC builds with NVIDIA technology? AMD isn't just going to magically pull some competitive tech out of a hat to compete, are they? Also, the backwards compatibility argument doesn't hold up anymore in the age of Games Pass, does it? Who's going to buy these machines? Congrats to your freedom. (laughs) Um, I've got some thoughts about this, but um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, Oliver, Windows isn't really associated with a super high quality gaming experience. So I can kind of see what, what the Adam is talking about here. Similarly, you know, whatever you want to say about NVIDIA, they are undoubtedly at the forefront of delivering new gaming technologies in the graphics space. So how is this going to differentiate itself, do you think? Well, I mean, obviously the backwards compatibility stuff, I think at least initially will probably be Xbox exclusive to some substantial degree. And maybe that does matter less for like Xbox series games, but it still matters for Xbox One games for 360 titles for original Xbox titles. I'd presume that would be exclusive and I do think that matters, but I'm not sure the extent to which the next gen Xbox interface will be unique to the Xbox models, at least at first, because obviously that's the case for the first Xbox handheld, the Xbox ROG Ally, the ROG Xbox Ally, whatever it's called, they always miss that one. Um, That is going to be the first device to have this kind of next generation Xbox on PC interface. And then there's some promises that eventually that will percolate to the older ROG Ally models later on the non Xbox branded ROG Ally models. But we don't know exactly how long it will take for that interface to percolate over to the kind of generalized PC market, how long that will take, if there will be any exclusive features like, for instance, you know, suspend, resume, sleep, awake, things like this that are kind of a key to the console experience that might not be present necessarily in those um, initial implementations or maybe present in those initial implementations on the Xbox PC side of things. So there's some question about like how far Microsoft goes with exclusivity of features and of the that interface. And I think if they do make that interface exclusive to the uh, Xbox effort, at least at first, that will be a key selling point in favor of that effort because there's not really a correspondingly strong interface on the PC side of things, right? Mm, yeah, um, I've got some thoughts on this, but um, Tom, I mean, obviously backwards compatibility with series software is is going to be pretty good, I'd say, for those who are invested in the uh, Xbox digital library. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's cool. Um, but is there anything, I mean, you know, the console war is effectively over it is. If, if we think about it. So, you know, that's an interesting question that the Adam is asking here. It's like, well, you know, who who is going to buy these machines apart from people who want to play their old Xbox games, which, you know, that's not, you know, obviously there's about 30 million of those series consoles owners out there who might be looking to upgrade. But I don't know. What do you think? It's uh, It really boils down to whether you... What you what you buy a console for? Like it, if it, for me, it's really just to have everything in a box that works perfectly with no tinkering involved. Uh, it's, everything's fluid. Yeah. Everything just flows. You don't need to optimize like drivers. You don't need to. Oh yeah, although these days you do need to wait for patches. That's uh, definitely a reality of modern <laughs> gaming. Oh, yeah, but it's not. Um, it's really by what degree is Microsoft going to turn this into a flexible device that will have as much functionality as a regular PC or how much of that will be hidden behind the scenes behind an Xbox layer, I guess, like a Steam big picture mode type thing. Is it going to be branched off uh, when you boot it up into PC mode or Xbox mode? How is it going to be split out and how are they kind of going to make this, keep this a kind of streamlined Xbox experience? So, um... I could see the value in a PC, uh, like a, a two-in-one model like that. You boot it up, Xbox there, PC there, choose which direction you want to go. Right, I, I get what you're saying. So it's it, a console and a PC in one has value because it is a, capable of doing many more yeah. things, yeah. tasks. Right. But then, yeah, if it's just you're booting into Windows, essentially, and everything's functional from there, and you should, in theory, have all the you know, bells and whistles of a true, you know, being able to upgrade with an NVIDIA card or any other parts, then I think I'd rather get a PC, a regular PC, and just do it that way. So it really comes yeah. down to uh, Microsoft and how they, how well they integrate the Xbox layer. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also how how well they basically get rid of everything that's a pain in the bum yeah. to do with Windows. You know, driver updates for specifically. I mean, Steam Deck handles that all just you know uh, perfectly well. You know, just like a console would. There's a system update available. Please press this button to download it, and that's it. That's pretty much it. Um, I think the other thing that is potentially, and I've talked about this on the on the direct prior, is that um, if essentially the business model is to a produce a console but b also to produce an alternative to the current um, pc pre-built market um, the concept of having to buy a, a, a cpu and a gpu in favor of an soc could actually have some benefits um, but there could be other questions there about expandability you know and upgrading you know how would you how would that be handled it's 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 a bit tricky I think we're still missing some key fundamentals in what the vision actually is yeah, going forward. For sure. Um, I think that's the bottom line. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who, who, who can say at this point? Uh, the competitive tech, though, I think AMD is making some you know big strides there. I, I think FSR4 was a major turning point for them because they do actually have an upscaling technology that is really, really good. Um, and they've got to follow suit with everything else that NVIDIA is doing. And, uh, you know, we've seen some interesting stuff from them that suggests that they're taking this very, very seriously. And obviously, uh, last week, Alex was talking about AMD's jet dense geometry format, which certainly looks very, very interesting. So, you know, great stuff ahead. Uh, but yes, I mean, when you're in the PC space, it is basically, OK, I'm going to buy a, a PC with an AMD CPU and an NVIDIA GPU. That's the sort yeah. of... Exactly. That's the sort of mindset that, that people have got to, uh, that, that um, AMD and um, Microsoft have got to compete against. And uh, backwards compatibility is uh, only going to have so much of an impact there, I think. <laughs>